Hey there YouTube, welcome to Food Lore. Today we're gonna find out whether tapping or flicking a can of soda prevents it from exploding. Now, I know a lot of other people have already tested this, but I feel like they always leave a little room for doubt. So we're gonna do a test that's extra thorough. That means before we even consider flicking or tapping a can, we're gonna test three variables. Temperature, time, and variety. You may already know this, but generally, solids dissolve more quickly at high temperatures. If we have some icy cold water here and some steaming hot water here, you'll see that a tablespoon of sugar dissolves more quickly in the hot water. However, when it comes to gases dissolved in liquids, the opposite is true. Gases dissolve more easily at low temperatures. And in essence, that's what a soda is. It's a bunch of carbon dioxide gas dissolved into syrupy, artificially colored water. So if we shake it to release some of that carbon dioxide from the solution, I'd expect it to re-dissolve more quickly if the can's cold. In other words, I think a colder can will be less explosive, but why speculate when we can just test it? We have seven cans of Coke here, all at various temperatures. They've all been shaken violently for exactly 10 seconds. We're going to let them rest for exactly five seconds, and then we're gonna open them at the exact same time. It looks like colder sodas are indeed less explosive. You might be wondering what happened to the 120 degree soda. Well, that one actually exploded as I was shaking it, spraying a fine dust of Coke over every surface in my kitchen and dining room. And not the good kind of Coke dust either. Meaning Coke Zero, obviously. Moving on, let's see how time affects these sodas. Because really, how long does it take for a soda to calm down with no flicking or tapping whatsoever? First, let's look at sodas right out of the fridge. Once again, each of these sodas was shaken for 10 seconds, but instead of opening them immediately, we're waiting various amounts of time before opening to see how much they've calmed down. Let's see what happens. Kind of impressive. They're basically all safe to open in 20 seconds, maybe even less. Let's try again with room temperature sodas. Yeah, the room temperature sodas, on the other hand, take over a minute to calm down. Not terribly surprising given what we saw in the temperature test. Finally, let's look at variety. Do different types of soda calm down more quickly or explode more violently than other types? We have here the top five best-selling sodas in the US. Coke, Diet Coke, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, and Mountain Dew. We also have the country's best-selling beer, Bud Light. Before testing any soda in a can, I wanted to look at how they foam out of a can. I realize this is a very stupid way to pour drinks, but I wanted to see them at their most foamy rather than their most drinkable. Unsurprisingly, the carbonated water, sorry, meant to say Bud Light, had the longest lasting foam, but I was surprised to see how much longer Dr. Pepper and Diet Coke's foam lasted relative to Pepsi, Mountain Dew, and regular Coke. So I suppose there's a good reason that Diet Coke became the meme drink to pair with Mentos. And similarly, a good reason why flight attendants hate you if you order Diet Coke on a plane. It just takes longer to pour because of the foam up. Now, let's see if these results hold up when opening shaken cans of each drink. First, let's try opening them after five seconds. There's no difference between the top and bottom row, I just wanted to get two samples of each. Now let's try with a 15 second wait between the shaking and the opening of the cans. So I definitely expected beer to be the foamiest, but Coke and Pepsi were way foamier than I was expecting, and Mountain Dew was way less foamy than I was expecting. Now we can finally do the test, does flicking or tapping calm down a can of soda? We're gonna use cold drinks because that's what people drink, and now we also know that all the flicking and tapping has to happen in the first 10 seconds or so, because a cold soda can calm down in as little as 15. Now there are a lot of different techniques for flicking and tapping cans, but I'll be focusing on this technique here, flicking around the side walls of the can. Of the videos I watched that demonstrate that flicking and tapping actually work, links in the description, they all use this technique. You probably know the drill at this point, they've all been shaken violently for 10 seconds. The top row will just sit there for an additional 10 seconds, while the bottom row will undergo this flicking regimen. Then we'll open them at the same time. I don't know about you, but I didn't see a big difference there. But let's try some more cans to be sure. To make things interesting, this time, try and guess which row got flicked and which row didn't. Surprise, it was the bottom row again. Okay, one last time with beer. This time, of the two beers in each column, 
One has been flicked and one hasn't. Can you guess all five that got flicked? Congrats if you got those right. You probably got it by noticing my hand position was slightly different in the flicked can videos. But hey, if you got it without noticing that, extra credit. Personally, I feel like there was no real difference between the cans that got flicked and those that didn't, but the video footage is all there, so you be the judge. Now, I know what a lot of you might be saying. Oh, well sure, those techniques don't work, but my special technique totally works every time and he never tested that. Well, let's try a few other techniques just to be sure. We have tapping the top, flicking the top, this weird thing where you snap the tab down for some reason, tapping the sides, tapping and flicking the bottom, and rolling the can because why not? It's not like any of these other ones make any sense. And in each case, they don't behave differently than the control can, which was untouched. So sorry to burst your bubble, not your carbon dioxide bubbles. Obviously those were totally unaffected, but rather the metaphorical bubble representing the pride you once had in your secret technique. So what did we learn? First, cold cans explode less and calm down more quickly than warm cans. The colder the can, the less explosive it will be. Second, time is a huge factor for how big an explosion you get when opening a shaken can. Cold cans actually calm down fairly quickly, but warm cans take a bit longer. Finally, tapping and flicking don't do anything. Maybe they have the most incredibly subtle effect, but if they're advertised as preventing this explosion from happening, they're not doing a very good job. Hey, you made it to the end. As a little bonus, I'll show you something cool. Did you know that a shaken can rolls down hills slower than an unshaken can? I'll leave it to the clever folks in the comments to explain why that happens. If you like this video and want to see another food myth busted, definitely don't check out this video here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.